Runaway trains are rare. Over the years of rail transportation, there have been very few full-on runaway train incidents compared to issues such as derailments, crashes, or collisions. Nonetheless, they can still be dangerous if not dealt with quickly. That's why there are so many precautions in place to prevent them from happening. These, however, still aren't enough, as Human Error pointed out in 2001. By most modern standards, a runaway train is close to impossible to set in motion. Most locomotives have three sets of brakes, as well as air brakes fitted to most good wagons, carriages, and rolling stock. On top of this, most diesels have what is known as a dead man switch, a pedal that the driver must hold down with their foot at all times while the engine is in motion. This way, should they pass out or be away from the controls while the engine is in motion, the pedal will lift up and cut the engine's power. Numerous other checks are in place too, such as passing loops to allow runaway trains to either be derailed or to allow other trains on the line to pass by, but few of these things were much help on the 15th of May 2001. On this day, an unnamed driver was using engine number 8888 to shunt a load of freight wagons around the yard of Walbridge, Ohio. The engine was hauling 25 empty wagons and 22 loaded ones when it approached a misaligned switch. The driver saw the switch, and despite how slow the train was going, he knew he couldn't stop short of it. The driver decided to slow down the train enough so that he could jump out, correct the switch, and jump back in before going down the wrong track. This is where it all went wrong. There were three different sets of brakes on this particular kind of locomotive. The first is the air brake. This applies the brakes on all the wagons connected to a train, essentially making it more of an emergency stop. This, however, was not connected to the wagons as they were being shunted, so only the engine's air brakes came on. Setting the air brake also disables the dead man switch. As to why, I am uncertain. The second brake is a standard type of block brake on each of the engine's wheels. These simply press a piece of metal against the wheels to apply friction to slow it down. They're simple, but aren't as effective at stopping a train as the other two. The final kind of brake is a dynamic brake. To simplify, these essentially change the motors that power the wheels into dynamos that generate electricity, essentially removing energy from the wheels which brings them to a stop. The throttle system is used to determine how strong the resistance of the dynamos is, and subsequently how strong the braking power is. In other words, full throttle with dynamic brakes on means the dynamos are on full stopping power. On this occasion, the driver applied the block brakes and went through the process of turning on the air brakes and dynamic brakes. Only, he didn't set the dynamic brakes correctly, so when he cranked the throttle to full power, he thought it was applying maximum braking power when he was actually setting the locomotive to full speed ahead. The weight of the train meant that it would accelerate too slow for him to notice when he jumped off to set the points. By the time he had corrected them and turned to board his locomotive, he found it going much faster than he expected. He tried to board it but was dragged 80 feet along the ground before letting go. The train was now heading out of the yard and south, deeper into the state of Ohio. What made this runaway train more of an issue was the two tankers of molten phenol it was carrying. Phenol being a very toxic ingredient used in the making of glue, paint and dyes. Yard managers, signal operators, and the police were soon made aware of the runaway train. Luckily, its acceleration was hindered by the block brakes that were applied, though the brakes would only keep its speed in check for a short amount of time until they were worn away to the point of uselessness. Several people tried to run alongside and board the locomotive with little success. At a passing loop, it was diverted into a siding with a derailleur placed on the track in an attempt to stop it, only for the force of the train to throw it clear of the track and continue thundering down the line. The local police were informed of a red emergency fuel cutoff button located on the side of the engine just under the running board. Because of the engine's speed, it was impossible to run alongside it to press the button, so naturally the police decided to handle it by doing what they do best. They waited by the tracks and fired a shotgun at the button from besides the line as it passed. Not only did the police mistakenly shoot three times at the big red fuel filler cap instead of the button, but the button needed to be held down for several seconds for it to cut the fuel, so shooting it would have done nothing anyway. Eventually, a northbound freight train had to be put in a siding to allow the runaway to safely pass. 
surpass it. It was decided that the engine pulling the train was to uncouple and give chase to the runaway. Eventually, it caught up to the rear of the train and they were coupled together, allowing the chasing engine to apply its brakes and slow the runaway enough for someone ahead to climb aboard and stop it. Upon inspection, the brake blocks of engine 8888 were completely destroyed from the heat caused by the friction from braking. The name of the driver responsible for the runaway was never revealed, nor was the disciplinary action taken against him by the company. Engine 8888 was repaired and put back into service, having earned the nickname of Crazy 8 by workers and enthusiasts of the railroad. Many people offered to buy the engine after seeing the story on the news, but CSX never bothered, claiming the engine was not worthy of preservation, likely not wanting a museum or enthusiast to keep it as a reminder of the story and giving them some bad publicity. In 2015, the engine was modified and rebuilt, being given the new number of 4389, with CSX likely wanting everyone to forget about the incident. The story was eventually forgotten in the minds of the general public, but did serve as inspiration for the film Unstoppable. You can put all the safety stops you want in place, but no matter what you do, no computer or machine will ever be able to account for human error, no matter how advanced. So, the moral of the story? Just try and be careful, because even the most up-to-date safety features aren't always guaranteed to stop a locomotive from doing an Ozzy Osbourne. Subscribe for more.